Hey guys, Crewman here, and one of the goals for my channel this year is to find the perfect 1440p gaming GPU, and to find it before the holiday season. Now I have not made a decision yet, but so far I have spent quite a bit of time with a plethora of GPUs from Team Red and Team Green. And what might be the best value out of all of them is the RX 6900 XT from AMD. Costing about an average of $400 to $450 on the used market, this GPU will basically max out any game in 1440p on a non-ray tracing workload. And even its ray tracing performance isn't that bad. Released almost four years, four years ago, and almost two, two generations ago, man, I feel old. This bad boy has aged like fine wine. With 16 gigs of VRAM, GDDR6 no less, not that crappy GDDR6X memory, and a TDP of about 300 watts, this bad boy is a beast. And if you are adventurous, you can overclock this thing. And if you are really confident in your abilities, no reason not to be, but do this at your own risk, you can use more power tool to unlock the TDP level and squeeze another three to five percent performance out on top of that for an 18 to 20 percent performance bonus over stock speeds. And I love them so much, I actually own two. On the left, I have an XFX Merc 319, and on the right, I have a Sapphire Hot Toxic Hybrid. Both of them are in different systems. So I've spent enough time fawning over this thing, showing you the specs of it, and that I actually own more than one of them. But let's get to the thing you guys are waiting for. Let's show you my testing. Now, if you guys are new to the channel, I want to quickly go over how I test GPUs. One, I'm not a huge fan of graphs, so don't expect them. And I won't be testing this against other GPUs because the point is I want to show you how good this thing is on its own merits. Chances are, if you're watching this video, then you've came here to see what my opinion on the 6900 XT is and not comparing it to other GPUs right now. There'll be another video for, our, for that in the future. Plus, you can see graphs from any of the larger YouTubers and there are a ton of reviews on this already. Next, and probably most controversial of all, even though I don't think so, all my testing is done in native resolution. When spending $300 plus on a GPU, I believe you should be able to play in your targeted resolution without any upscalers. So you won't see any upscaling from me. All my testing is done natively. Finally, I use a mix of benchmarks and in-game stills as I feel like the benchmark doesn't tell you the entire story and I like to show you some in-game footage as well so you will see a mix of both of those. So here's a comparison of my test bench and my gaming PC with the 6900 XT in it. The biggest difference you'll note is the CPU and the RAM where the test bench has better CPU in the 5800X 3D versus the 5800X on the gaming PC. The test bench has double the amount of RAM, 32 over 16 gig in the gaming PC. The final difference is the GPU. The Sapphire Toxic is a hybrid, whereas the Merc 319 is a standard air-cooled GPU. There wasn't that big of a difference. The one thing I will note was I did not need to use more power tool on the Sapphire Toxic because it already had a higher TDP enabled. So without further ado, let's get to what you all have been waiting for and the gaming benchmarks. So first I want to go over my overclocks. Now this is a quick simple overclock I did for my 6900 XT Merc and I just wanted to show it to you. I will do a more comprehensive OCing video uh, probably at a later date. The next thing I want to show you is my 6700 XT Toxic. Now this one has a higher TDP because it's a hybrid cool, a hybrid model, and because it's a hybrid cooler and you can cool this better, you can push the frequency up to about 20, almost 2800. So now that you see my overclocks, let me show you how this thing performs on stock and OC settings. Because honestly, overclocking this thing takes maybe 10, 15 minutes max, and you owe it to yourself to get the extra performance out of the GPU. So the first game I want to quickly go over is Call of Duty. This is my eSports title, you know, like your Fortnite, your Apex, something like that. I had all my settings on max, and I'm getting about 137 FPS. Now this is not overclocked. We do not have any overclocks in this setting, and you can see that I do have upscaling off, and again, upscaling is off on everything. So we're getting about 130 FPS, 
You can see the in-game footage right here. We're basically hitting the monitor cap and the performance was great. There's not much else to say about it other than you will max everything out in 1440p on about 170 hertz monitor. The gameplay was great. It was fluid, had no issues. Honestly, I could play this on this or my 4090 system and I frankly probably wouldn't know the difference with how smooth it played. Here are the OC settings running the benchmark. It's only about a 5% jump as far as the benchmark goes. I honestly expected it to be a little higher and I wanna show you how this does in game where you will actually notice quite a remarkable difference. So I was getting between about 185 to 190 FPS. This was, I just happened to grab, take a screen grab when it was showing 191, but it was floating mostly in the uh, 180s. So it was basically capping out my monitor anyway, but you will notice about a 10% performance bump with the OC versus the non-OC. Again, Call of Duty plays buttery smooth, I, the next game I want to move on to is Helldivers. Now I will say this, Helldivers is weird in that it uses a lot, it's it's pretty poorly unoptimized if we're being honest. Like a 4090 in 4K only gets about 75 FPS and it uses a lot more CPU than it should. I don't really understand how it works, but I do want to show you how it performed. You're getting about unoverclocked, it was about 74 FPS and overclocked, it was about 75 FPS. Honestly, uh, with Helldivers, if you can get you know, if you can run basically max settings, which I did have to drop some settings to medium, you'll get about 75 FPS. And I think that's where you want to be on upscaled and you won't have any issues. I have actually played a lot of Helldivers on this C uh, GPU and I'd be perfectly happy running a 6900 XT on it. Moving to Forbidden West, which is a fantastic game and I recommend anybody play it if they can. It's one of the best stories of the last two years in my opinion. I maxed every setting out. Uh, upscaling off I was getting about 94 FPS at stock settings and then when we overclock it we're getting about 106 FPS uh, now you know with anything the, the FPS does fluctuate in testing it for about 20 minutes on each one we were getting about a 10 to 12 percent uh, difference in performance with the overclock settings versus stock settings so far this is the highest gap I've seen and I'm not quite sure why, but you know, I'll take it. It's it's free performance, but again, it, it played wonderfully and I have no complaints and it's actually the next game that I plan on beating. Now this next game, Cyberpunk 2077, I did a little bit more testing because I really wanted to see how this thing would do with ray tracing. So you can see the settings that I have right here. And in my opinion, it's I feel like it's very important to show you that the 6900 XT and some other RDNA 2 cards like the 6800 XT are able to do some overclock, some ray tracing. Now this is stock settings on my air-cooled Merc and it's important to make that differentiation because I did test this one and the Hype and the Sapphire and I did notice a difference. Now you'll see we're getting about 28 FPS. Now I, run the, I ran this benchmark about 10 times and that was about the range I was getting. Now I, I don't really think I would consider that playable because I need at least 30 FPS and I'm a big proponent of playing Cyberpunk with ray tracing as high as you can get it on your GPU and at native settings. But I think I just need slightly more. This is an in-game picture. I like to use this uh, area I'm in because there's there's a lot of lights and shadows and then I can go to grass as well and look at the performance differences. I played this for about five minutes on, on this particular setting. It was okay. I did notice the occasional stutter, just the occasional one, and you don't really get a lot of good draw distance as well, which is a little disappointing. I'm not sure if that's the game or the GPU. I was getting like 31 FPS, like it was floating between 29 to 31 FPS. I would say that this is borderline playable and I would probably lower ray tracing a little bit, but things do change when you overclock it. So now you can see Cyber Cyberpunk 2077 OC'd. We're getting about 31.61 FPS. I ran this about 10 different times. Um, now this is about a 10% improvement, which when you're borderline playable does make all the difference. Played the same area that I did before. And I was getting between 33 to 34 to 36 FPS-ish. It was kind of bouncing between that range. I definitely noticed a difference. And the OC is makes all the difference between trying to play this with ray tracing on medium versus ray tracing on low, which I think does give you a better experience. And I did enjoy this better. I do want to denote that what I'm showing you right here is my Sapphire at stock settings. 
Now, the most interesting thing and the reason I want to show this is because the Sapphire model has a higher TDP than the Merck XFS model. But this was at stock settings. I got about 31.26 FPS or about a 10% difference from my Merck model. So I just I wanted to make that note. And then when you OC it, you're looking at about a little bit less than 10%, about an 8 the 7 to 8% difference when you OC it at 33.22 FPS. Now remember, I was able to overclock this model higher because it is a hybrid model. And um, again, it has a higher TDP, which enables higher clocks. You know, from the OC'd air-cooled one to the OC'd hybrid one, you're looking at about an 8 to 9% difference, which matters in playing Cyberpunk on this one. I was getting close to about 40 FPS, which is pretty incredible and takes this thing from borderline playable again as i already said to you would have a f almost flawless experience uh, and it is a showcase for how well the 6900 xt actually can do ray tracing popular or contrary to popular belief and i would argue that cyberpunk 2077 is the second most demanding game when it comes to ray tracing and is a game that is designed to cripple GPUs and bring them to their knees. If Cyberpunk 2077 is something that you want to play and you want to take advantage of the ray tracing, I would definitely recommend trying to get a hybrid model or one of the higher end model 6900 XTs because it will make a difference. And finally, here's Alan Wake. Uh, I had a ray tracing on medium, everything else on high. Alan Wake is a game that cripples every GPU. I wouldn't consider this playable. You're getting like 18 to 21 FPS. You can lower the you can lower the ray tracing, but if you have it on so low at that point, in, in my opinion, it doesn't. It feels pointless. Uh, I refuse to play with upscaling. I think, like I said, I think it defeats the purpose of spending three to four, or over 300 dollars on a GPU. So I took ray tracing off, and we're floating between 86 to 91 FPS, which just suddenly becomes perfectly playable, and then some for a single player game. And it looks pretty good. Let me show you the difference between ray tracing and not ray tracing. This is not ray. This is ray traced right here, and this is not ray traced. There is a difference, and I notice it because I, I'm a graphical snob. I'm the first to admit it. But it's not like this is an ugly game by any any means. And if this is the only game that you can't actually play with ray tracing on, I honestly feel like you will be okay. So as you can see, in the games where FPS matters like Call of Duty and any other esports titles, we max it. As in, when I say we max it, we max our monitor. Once you go over your monitor's FPS, you're not really gonna notice a performance improvement, which is honestly one of the reasons why when you're building a new PC, the most important thing is to figure out your monitor and then to get a GPU to match it. Or if you get your GPU first, you wanna get a good monitor that matches it. And as you can see, the monitor that I'm using, the Gigabyte M27Q, which is a fantastic 1440p monitor, and pretty much my value 1440p monitor of choice right now works perfectly with the RX 6900 XT. And the games where you need it to be playable, as in you know single player games where you need above 60 FPS, you're getting almost 100 in almost all of the games minus Cyberpunk 2077, which in that case, in my humble opinion, 35 or 38 to 45 FPS is more than playable. And you are getting that on the hybrid model and the higher end models, which is why I would recommend that if you can find a medium end model like this one, the XFX Merc, which is on the left, or a higher end model like the Sapphire Toxic on the right, for reasonably close to the same price, even within like 30, 40 bucks, I would definitely get the higher end model, as you will notice a difference in overclocking potential and you will be able to squeeze those extra frames out when it matters in games like Cyberpunk 2077. And again, I basically paid the same price for both of these 6900 XTs. We did see it hit the peak of its ray, ray tracing potential in Alan Wake 2, which is uh, unfortunately not playable, but that game breaks most GPUs and I wouldn't sweat it. If that's the only game you can't use ray tracing on, I'd be fine with that. And all you have to do is turn ray tracing off and you have a fantastic perform experience in Alan Wake 2. One thing I will say is if you need an efficient GPU, this is not your GPU, as the toxic model was pulling well over 300 watts. And if you adjust the standard air-cooled one with more power tool, you're cranking close to 300 watts easily. Even when you don't have more power tool set, you're easily at 250 watts or higher. So this GPU is not efficient at all, but 
when you're at the budget and the lower end space and you're trying to max out your performance per dollar ratio, which I think the 6900 XT does amazingly, I personally don't think efficiency matters. It's not like you're gonna leave this thing on 24 seven. You're only gonna use it whenever you game. 1080p is starting to look dated in my opinion and real, for, real 4K unupscaled is not exactly affordable yet to the average person. But 1440p is the perfect balance with huge visual improvements over 1080p. And if you don't believe me, just go YouTube it and there are plenty of content creators who have fantastic videos on the subject. And at the same point, it doesn't break the bank like 4K will. For the current market price of the 6900 XT at the time of this filming, which is between, I would say, $400 to $450, it's hard to find something that will come close to it. With a 4070 basically being a 3080, which is slower than a 6900 XT in everything but heavy ray tracing workloads, and a 7800 XT is basically a 6800 XT, which is also slower than a 6900 XT, there is nothing on the new or used market at that price point that will get you that kind of value. You have to move up to around the $550 to $600 price range for a 7800 GRE, a 4070 Super, or a 3090. And even then, you're looking at maybe only a 10 to 15% performance bump. Now a lot higher, like you're looking at probably 25 to 35% on ray tracing. But with that savings, you can basically buy a good AM4 CPU and maybe even a 5800 X3D on the used market which I've seen on eBay for as low as $150. Now you'll have to search, but they're there. And as you can see, the 5800X3D is the perfect GPU to pair with the 6900XT. You can basically build a 6900XT gaming PC with a monitor for probably under $1,200 if you're willing to buy used parts. It's hard to beat that kind of value. And the PC that my 6900XT Sapphire is in only cost me $720, not counting the monitor, but I did repair the CPU, so that is semi-cheating and not a realistic cost. But the point is, is you can easily build a system like that for under a $1,000, not, not counting the monitor, which will last you for years. Thanks to the 16 gigs of VRAM, which is overkill, I don't think you need any more than 12, you will continue to max 1440p at your monitor's resolution for years to come. Essentially, as long as you're okay with playing on this resolution, you're probably set for another, probably another two generations, as I can't see games coming out that will cause you to have massive performance loss at your target gaming resolution, which is 1440p. All of that said and done, all of the testing I did, and this video took me quite a long time to film and to get it the way I wanted, should you buy the 6900 XT? Yes, you should. In my opinion, the 6900 XT is the value king at its current price point. I don't see a GPU between $400 to $450 that is better. And like I said, I don't even think it's worth stepping up to that next level of the 4070 Super or the 7900 GRE if you're budget strapped when you could use that money on a CPU. So yes, the 6900 XT is a croup buy. It is the best value GPU of the last year. And I will tell anybody who listens, a used 6900 XT is where you should look to buy if you are interested in 1440p gaming. It is the top of the hill, the king of the mountain, and it can even do ray tracing, all right? So I know a lot of people have a lot of negative experiences on AMD and they wanna go team green, but I'm telling you, you're making a mistake if you pick a 3080 over a 6900 XT at this price point. This is a buy, buy, buy. So thanks again for watching this video. Please like and subscribe for more GPU content and GPU reviews. We are going to find the best 1440p GPU by the end of this year before the holiday season. Frankly, I wonder if this is going to be it. I still have a few more GPUs to go, so we will see. But this is the value king right now. Thanks again for watching. Group man.